Uh, the word you hear on the slide reads Wilujeng Sumping. It's welcome in Sundanese. Wilujeng Sumping, Wilujeng Sonten, Kahatur para pamirsa sadayana. Wilujeng Ulubiung dina ia acara Abdi Syauki bade janten panyatur ngenaan bahasa Sunda orang ngawanohken naon bahasa Sunda sasiren sabenyiren pikin orang ngamu mulai bahasa Sunda salaku salah saiji bahasa nuaya di dunia salah saiji bahasa daerah nu kedah dibumulai ke orang sadayana Good afternoon everyone welcome to my talk introduction to Sundanese my name is Syauki and I will be the speaker today I will introduce you to Sundanese. What is Sundanese? And uh, it is as my part to um, to save the language from uh, from being endangered. So this is the outline of my presentation today. Only four points, not so much. Okay, let's start. A couple months ago, I stumbled upon this tweet. It has always seemed like the world's most mysterious language to me. 40 million speakers and virtually nothing in translation. Yes, for some it is the world's mysterious language. Like, what is Sundanese? Where does it spoken? In order to know that, this is Asia. We are here approximately and we will take a seven hour flight or 10 hour flight with connection and stuff to the red box area the western part of java island so the green area is where sundanese is spoken um, it is in the province of west java and banten uh, politically uh, sundanese is a malayo-polynesian language so it belongs to the austronesian language uh, family and yes it has 30, 40 million speakers. It is actually the second most spoken language in Indonesian, but that doesn't count Indonesian. Okay, so this is how Sundanese, how I tell Sundanese is the rebellious son of the family. We have the word I in all Austronesian, not all, in some Austronesian languages. Well, everyone say mata, mata, maso, and there is maca, matan, and then comes Sundanese, my language with panon. Oh, actually, we do have the word mata, but not so much used. Okay, now, how the language works. This is the Sundanese script you've seen before. Uh, we have 18 consonant sounds and seven vowel sounds. That, that, that's the native sounds. It goes ka, ga, nga, cha, ja, nya, ta, da, na, pa, ba, ma, ya, ra, la. Okay, the R is always rolled. I cannot roll my R, but in Sundanese you always roll your R. I cannot. So, ya, ra, la, wa, sa, ha. It means that if you cannot roll your R, it's fine because they understand me. And I'm a native speaker of Sundanese. <laughs> and we have seven vowels here. We have A, E, I, O, U, E, that's a schwa, and E, E. Yes, good. We also have foreign sounds actually, but uh, almost all Sundanese never pronounce it like it is, like we have fa and va, but we pronounce it, pronounce it pa, ka from Arabic as ka, and then ksa, we just use k and s, ksa, za becomes ja, ha becomes ha, and sha becomes sa. So my name is Shauki, but Sundanese people call me Sauki. And that's how the script works. It's a, it's an abugida. So you put symbols before, after, above, under, or a combination of it to make a new sound from the kaganga, tadana, etc. So it's pretty simple. And uh, here I have the basic phrases of Sundanese. It is written in Latin alphabet. You pronounce everything as it is written. So. There is no difficult spelling like we have in Scots earlier. 
So we have the first is Sampurasun. Sampurasun. We use Sampurasun as hello or when we are opening a speech, but literally it means like I'm sorry. Sundanese people likes to say sorry. Like we are like the typical Canadian of Indonesia. <laughs> That, uh, yes, before we speak, we, we say, I'm sorry. And the uh, answer to Sampurasun is Rampes. Rampes, yes. Uh, next, I have the word Wilujeng. Wilujeng means uh, safety. Uh, it also can mean uh, happiness. And um, it, in this case, it means good. Like in good morning, good afternoon. So we have Wilujeng enjing, Wilujeng enjing, Wilujeng enjing. It's like good morning. It is used between 6 a.m. to uh, 11 a.m. Then we have Wilujeng siang. Yes, Wilujeng siang is used between 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Then we have Wilujeng sonten. Wilujeng Sonten, it's like good afternoon, but only used to from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. And then 6 p.m. afterward until the morning, we use Wilujeng Wengi. Wilujeng Wengi, like good evening or good night. Then we have the word Hatur Nuhun. Hatur Nuhun, or uh, shortly Nuhun. Nuhun means thank you. Hatur Nuhun, it means Thank you. And you can answer it with Sawang Sulna. Sawang Sulna or Sami Sami. Sami means same. So uh, thank you, same to you. Okay, next we have two magic words in Sundanese. If you know these two words, basically you can get by anything in Sundanese speaking area. The first word is Punten. Punten is like, excuse me or I'm sorry. Again, we say that a lot because we like to say sorry. When So, like when you are going through a lot of person, you say, excuse me, in Sundanese, you can say, punten. Or uh, you are visiting your friend's house, you want to ask, somebody's home, anybody's home? Instead of that, you say, punten. Yes, and the answer to punten is mangga. Mangga. So if somebody says punten to you, you say mangga. But mangga can also be used when you are giving something, like if I give this to you, mangga, 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 yeah, it means there you go. Or it can also mean like, please, like, mangga, mangga, please, after you. So it's really useful, this, okay, maybe three words, nuhun, punten, and mangga, that's all the basic words you need to know. <laughs> yeah, but that ain't fun. Like, we are in polyglot conference. If I only teach you three words, like, what am I doing here? So, next is, how are you? We ask, uh, kumaha damang. Kumaha means how, damang means healthy. So it's like, how are you? Are you healthy? We directly ask them whether they are healthy or not. And the answer, the Sundanese answer is pangestu, pangestu. But because most Sundanese speakers are Muslim, usually they use the Islamic phrase Alhamdulillah, which means praise to God. So if, if you're feeling bad, but you don't want to show it, you can just say uh, Alhamdulillah, like, praise to God. Praise to God for what? Because I'm sick and I don't need to work. Yeah, that can be it. So you will uh, hear a lot of Alhamdulillah if you ask Kumaha Damang. Okay, next. Yes, we do use Kumaha Damang when we are starting a small talk. But when we are meeting someone, like we are running into someone on our way, uh, or I meet an old friend, like the first thing comes to my mind would not be how are you, but it would be where are you going? And this is what we really ask to each other in Sundanese. Bade kamana? Or rek kamana? Same meaning, just a different uh, usage I will explain later. And 
Sometimes for foreigners, they think, why people are so nosy, they want to know where I'm going. Actually, we don't care. <laughs> because what, why? Because the answer is kapayun or kaharap. And it means, payun means front. So it's like, I'm going to the front, I'm going there. I'm going over there. We don't, we don't need to say, oh, I'm going to work, I'm going to school, I'm going to Fukuoka for a polyglot conference. No, I just say, I'm going there. And people is, is fine with that answer. And yes, if people ask you, bade kamana, you answer with kapayun. If people ask you, rek kamana, you answer with kaharup. I will explain later. Then we have the word for yes. We have uh, sumuhun or muhun uh, shortly and enya. Enya. Mm -hmm. And the word for no is hente. Hente or te. Yes, good, very good. Next we have these two set of uh, two set of words so it is what you say when somebody calls you. It's like what, but only use when somebody calls you by your name. Like if my mother called me, Shauki, I will answer only with Kulan. So Kulan is used by male and Kah is used by female. So Sundanese is actually a gender neutral language, I think, but they have this feature that makes me doubt, is it really gender neutral? Because it is assigned to certain uh, gender. I cannot say kah. If I say kah to my mother, she will scold me like, what are you? You are not a female. But um, that's not a discussion. <laughs> okay, now, uh, how to present yourself in Sundanese? There is something uh, most foreigner don't like uh, about this, but I will start with me. Sampurasun Nepangken Abdi Syauki Kawit di Indonesia Abdi Linggih di Bandung Yuswa Abdi 20 Tilo Tahun Hatur Nuhun nah, It's hello, let me introduce myself I am Syauki, so Abdi is I we, we have my name but people don't use that So Abdi, your name Kawit di your country, your city Abdi Linggih di, where do you live, your city or your area? Yuswa Abdi, my, your age. So, uh, and Hatur Nuhun, thank you. Mm, it is common for Sundanese to ask other people about their age. It's not a taboo like most Western society think. Uh, why later? Now, let's discuss numbers. It's quite simple. Uh, somehow it's like a Japanese or Chinese number, but more simple. We start with zero. Zero is anol. Anol. Hiji. Dua. Tilu. Opat. Lima. Genep. Tujuh. Dalapan. Salapan. Sapulu, pretty easy, right? So, pulu mean ten and sa means one. Other than hiji, uh, uh, other than one, one in other place like ten, hundred, etc. We use sa, and it is a clitic, so you join it with the with the other word. So the word for ten is belas. We have sa belas. It's like one ten. 12, like 13, 13 is easy. Tilu, belas. 14, opat, belas. 15, etc. And then the word for 10 is pulu. You just mix the word. 20, 2, 10. 2, pulu. Tilu, pulu. Opat, pulu. If you want to say like uh, 21, it's 20, hiji. 25, it's 25. It's really easy. It's like a Chinese or Japanese number. Uh, but we don't have like the 10,000 become mang or bang in uh, Japanese. We don't have that. Ten, we have uh, 1,000. It's sarebu there. Um, let me just see. Sarebu there. 
uh, 10.000 ribu 20.000 ribu 30.000 ribu and 1 million sayuta so with this with this set of number you can make numbers in Sudanese until I don't know one billion uh, before one billion like 999 million and so okay so I told you that there are some uh, there are two phrases we can use uh, here we have uh, badekamana and rekamana we have kapayun and kaharep why do we do that so please take a look at this conversation there is the English translation and there is Sundanese and also Sundanese eh kang dadang badekamana eh teh eis badekapayun teh Manito selami tepat tepang kamana wae kaleresan uju seir angkat angkatan abdi teh tuang rama damang damang wae pun bapa mah linggi hela tuh kang kabumi aduh punten pisan nuju ayah periyogi mangga teh tipayun mangga dat sundenis also sundenis eh dadang reka mana eh eis reka hara pue menigus lila tepat panggi kamana wae biasa ke indit inditan wae eh urang teh Si abah damang, jag jag wae si abah mah nyimpang hela tuh ka imah. Eleuh punten pisan keur aya urusan euy ti heulanya mangga. It's the exact same conversation. The exactly same meaning, but we have two version of it. So, Sundanese like Japanese, like Korean, like other Asian languages, we have this polite form. Um, this one on, on your left is the polite form and in the middle is the normal form i don't want to say non polite or impolite so we know it as undak usuk bahasa sunda it means the the politeliness of sundanese language so bahasa sunda or sundanese language has two forms we have bahasa lemes which is the polite form and bahasa loma which is the normal form and the polite form you use it uh, to respect the other way you use it when you're talking with the elders with somebody of a higher ranks than you so same stuff like uh, Japanese and uh, Korean basically and in Sundanese there is lemes kerbatur and lemes kersorangan kerbatur means for somebody else kersorangan means for yourself so in Sundanese Respecting the others and respecting yourself are totally different thing because we use different words And under bahasa loma the normal form we have bahasa cohag The rude language it is used when people are angry used to address animal for swearing so in Sundanese we have a sign register only for swearing and to be angry So take a look at the examples we have, I didn't put the English translation here. So we have, uh, lemas is the polite, loma is uh, non-polite, uh, normal, sorry. That's the personal pronoun. We have abdi or sim kuring. It's for I. For you, we have anjen, salira, hidup. For he or she, we have anjena. Uh, it's gender neutral, so we can use for he or she or it. Then we have urang. For we, aranjen, for you, and aranjena, for they. That's for the polite form. For the normal form, we have kuring or aing, maneh or sia, for you, manehna, for he or she, urang, for we, maraneh, for you, maranehna, for they. And these are some verbs. Uh, the table on the below uh, are some verbs in Sundanese. We have, for example, in English, to eat or eat. We have tuang, neda, dahar, and nyatu. It's, it means eat. If we are talking about our father, for example, I'm talking about my father, I cannot say manehna because it's my father. I have to respect him. So I have to say anjena. I ha and I have to say anjena tuang. I cannot say anjena dahar. That's just rude. And if I'm saying to my mom or to my grandfather, father that I am eating I have to use abdi even sim kuring 
is bad. I have to use abdi or I have to use my name. And I use the the verb I use is neda. I cannot use tuang because tuang is for my grandparents. It's for my parents. So I have to say abdi neda. But if I'm with my friend, I'm telling them I'm eating. I can say aing dahar. But if I say that to my parents, my grandparents, they would slap me right away. <laughs> And I, uh, when you When you have cooked something for, I don't know, your children, your sister, your brother, and they don't want to eat that, while well, you have spent all your energy, your time, your money to that meal, you are getting angry, they don't want to eat your meal, you can say to them, Nyatu sia, eat this. It means that you are angry because they don't eat and you ask them to eat. So, uh, that's the different usage. But sometimes the words are uh, the same. Like we have uh, mapa here. Uh, it's here, mapa, uh, and we have tingal, and also here lempang. It's to walk. Same for the uh, loma. That's the normal and the rude language. And uh, here tempo tenjo, but this is the same tingal tingal, and this is. Dangu, kuping, denge, denge. So, this is what makes Sundanese kind of difficult for people to learn because you need to understand how to use this verb in uh, daily communication. Okay, so that's the politeness level in Sundanese. This is a summary of Sundanese grammar. I won't go too much about this. So the sentence structure is subject, verb, object. The subject and object can be omitted if context uh, support it. It's a head initial language, so unlike English, you want to say like red book in Sundanese, you say it book red, buku berem. There are no, ten, no tenses, no cases, no articles. It's general neutral, but I don't know, we have that kulan and kah case. And it has at least two registers. In the past, linguists um, categorized it has uh, that Sundanese has five registers, uh, but now it is simplified to two registers: the polite and the normal register. And we have affixes, uh, prefix, infix, and suffix, and redu reduplication to modify a word. For example, I have the word baca. It means read. We have maca, that's an active transitive verb, reading something. We have dibaca, it's a passive verb, is read, is read. Pang macakun, read for me. Bacaun, it's something to read, so it's already a noun. And babacaan, it's reading continuously, especially reading prayer. And we have budak, child or infant or pupil. Then we have budak-budak or barudak. Children, so it's the plural form. For the plural, we either make the word doubles or use the infix r there. And we have bubudakun, childish or childlike. For aspect and tense, we express it with adverb. For example, here I have kuring dahar. I, we have discussed this example before. Kuring dahar, I eat. Kuring ges dahar, I have eaten. Kuring rek dahar, I will eat. Kuring bie dahar, I ate or I just ate. Kuring ker dahar, I am eating. Kuring bie ker dahar, I was eating. So the dahar uh, is still the same regardless of the tense and aspect. And we have also some pragmatic particles to convey different uh, meaning. I have three sentences here, uh, different, just slightly to each other. First, Ujang Sakola di Jepang. Ujang is a personal name. Ujang Teh Sakola di Jepang. Ujang Ma Sakola di Jepang. So how do they differ? So Ujang Sakola di Jepang, that's the basic uh, construction you can. Ujang Sakola, it comes from the word school, uh, is studying. Ujang is studying in Japan. So like when you want to tell someone, oh, Ujang is studying in Japan, you tell them, Ujang sakola di Jepang. But when someone asks you, for example, where where does Ujang study now? Ujang teh sakola di Jepang. 
and if someone if that person ask you uh, is Ujang studying in the US Ujang mah sekolah di Jepang so the word ma has some uh, negative or negation uh, it provides new information and mm, teh it gives uh, information it's actually quite difficult to uh, to describe um, okay I have some fun facts in Sundanese it's about time while I don't know who came up with 24-hour timing system in Sundanese. We have our own timing system, almost like 24-hour, but it is based on natural occurrence. Like the Tuvan language, it has months based on the natural occurrence. Now we have in Sundanese we have time. For example, here we have kongkorongok uh, hayam. Kongkorongok hayam means kukedudu du chicken. So when the chicken sounds. It's 4 a.m. in the morning. Um, and then we have this uh, like Tunggang Gunung. Tunggang Gunung means riding mountain. Why is it like that? Because when around 4 p.m. in Sudanese speaking area, of course, the sun looks just like it is riding the mountain. So things like that. Uh, then we have this Hariem Benget unclear face you cannot see people's faces that's 7 p.m. that's when it gets dark uh, but this is kind of long you can just 7 p.m. instead of harian banget so uh, most people use the 24 hour or 12 hour yes yes system only works because we're near the equator yes next fun fact all the words you see in front of you means to fall. <laughs> so we have gebis and labu. That's the polite uh, version of the, of the general fall. It's a fall in general. You don't describe how do you fall. Murag and ragrag, you only use it with objects. You never murag, you are not a chair, you're not a table. And all the Tiba baranting, tiba buranja, tiga jelik, tiga brak, tiga brus, etc. It all means fall, but in certain condition. For example, we have tiga jebur there. Uh, it's here, tiga jebur. Tiga jebur means you are falling into a body of water. And there is also tiga jubar. Also means you are falling into a body of water, but deeper. <laughs> and it can be really, really specific. For uh, like tiko sewat, it's falling uh, because you trip on yourself. It, it's you trip on your shoelace or you wear a trousers or a shirt that is too long so that you fall. That's tiko sewat. And uh, this one, it means it's in Indonesian. It says to fall in Sundanese. So to give you a picture how we fall in Sundanese. Yeah, it's a lot of words. I, I can't even describe one by one. It's too complicated. Next, Sundanese have close family ties. This is what we call as our family. Maybe in, in, in English culture or in American culture, your family is your parents, uh, your spouse, your children. That's it. Oh, yes. The red box is I, Abdi. But in Sundanese, no, you with your grandparents and with their siblings are the, your family. So we have this, all, all these words just to describe the family relationship. The blue color is a uh, male, uh, pink color is female. For the white color, it means that it's gender, gender neutral. You can use with either male or female. Um, and it goes higher. If you see, there is a small dot just above Aki Nini. Aki Nini is grandfather and grandmother. Because it can go way up. The parents of your grandparents, we call it Buyut. The parents of your Buyut is Bao. The parents of your Bao is Janggawareng. The parents of Janggawareng is Udeg Udeg. The parents of Kait Siwur, eh, of Udeg Udeg is Kait Siwur, and the parents of Kait Siwur is Bau Sinduk. That far. You can, I don't know how many generations, maybe seven or nine generations up, 
But yes, we can describe it that far. And this word from buyut bau jangkawareng, it also goes down. So we have inchu. Inchu is grandson. The son of your grandson is your buyut. The son of your buyut is your bau, etc., etc., etc. So it goes up and down. That's how close we are with our family. Um, and because we're Muslim, you know, uh, maybe you know, some Muslims, they celebrate Eid with their family. It can get very crowded when you celebrate Eid with your family. I can't even tell who is who. Okay. Oops. Now, this apparatus is a blessing and threat for the tongue. It's a blessing for this tongue because it can provide us with more rice easier. As Asian Sundanese eats rice as their staple food, and it's also a threat for the tongue as in the Sundanese language. Anybody know how to cook rice with this rice cooker? It's pretty simple. You're pretty simple, right? You just wash the rice, put it in the rice cooker, put water, and then press it. Cook. You wait, I don't know, 30 minutes, you have rice. And in Sundanese uh, society, we use this now. And because of that, we lost a lot of words because rice cooking in Sundanese is no easy stuff. First, the rice. You put it in a bamboo big plate called a nyiru. And then you search the rice for any unwanted materials like gravels or small animals. And we call it napi. No one napi anymore because the rice is clean already. No one knows what is nappy. And then we wash the rice inside a bamboo container named boboko. And the washing process is called nisikan. No one knows what is nisikan anymore because they just, oh, I'm going to wash the rice. Because we cannot say it's nisikan if it's inside this. Nisikan is inside this, inside boboko. And the water is called chibeas. Chi is water, beas is uh, rice, uh, uncooked rice. Then we cook the rice twice. First process is called ngagigihan. Cook until it is half cooked, so something like that. Inside this, this is a saeng. And this bamboo, it's a cone-shaped bamboo container. It's called asupan. And then after the rice is halfway cooked, we take the rice, mix it with hot water inside a... It, it can be plastic, it can be from stone container called a dulang. This is the container with a wooden big spoon named pangari. And the process is called ngari. And then we cook the rice again until it is cooked well. And the process is called Ngasepan, from the word here, asepan. Asepan is this, this bamboo stuff. Then come after the rice is cooked well, comes the signature process of Sundanese rice cooking called ngakul. So we put the cooked rice inside the dulang. We use pangari, as previously I showed you, with a hihit. This is a hihit uh, bamboo fan thingy. So the, the left hand, with the left hand, we fan the rice and the right hand, we have to like folding the rice. So the rice loses uh, moisture uh, and it can be eaten uh, not too hot. And I've read that it actually loosens the sugar content in the rice or something. So it is healthier. And now, because we have rice cooker, no one is ngakul anymore. No one is ngasepan or ngagigihan anymore. No one knows what the hell is dulang or pangari. So yes, and after ngakul, yeah, we serve it and we eat. So mm, yeah, that's kind of that's how the Sundanese makes rice. And the simple invention of rice cooker, it threatens the language, like it has big impact to the language. Okay, I want you to sing in Sundanese. It's a simple song, it's a children's song. This is a very simple song, only four lines. Uh, it is used like 
picking a turn like ini mini my ni more something like that in English in Sundanese we call it ching chang keling it has no meaning uh, okay so <clears throat> Uh, it goes like this, my voice is not that good, but I hope this can be fun for everyone. It goes like this. Ching chang keling manuk ching kleng cindetan Plos kakolong bapak satar bulan nang Just like that! Come on, it's easy! Good, good. So, if you are curious with the meaning, Manuk is bird. So, I have this picture. Manuk cingkleng, I don't know, some kind of bird. Cindetan means sit. Plus kakolong, go to the under. Kolong is un the under part of something, like under table or something. Bapa satar, bapa is father or mister. Bulanang is bald. So, let's do it once again because we still have time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just one more, one more. Okay, one, two, three. Very good, very good. Okay, uh, something that I cannot avoid apparently. Billy Bari Tumaros, Manga. If you have questions, Manga, please. Uh, okay, so for the first question, how Sundanese coexist in Indone with Indonesian? Um, I think nowadays people are st people start not to abandon, but they use less and less uh, Sundanese because uh, it is like people in general think that if I speak Indonesian well, if I speak English well, I can get a job, I can get better job, uh, and I only use Sundanese at home anyway, so things like that. So it is only used with their home, with their close friends and community, and actually there are not so much literature in Sundanese nowadays. In the past, it used to be a lot of literature, but now not anymore, because people only use it uh, for speaking uh, and less uh, writing. and. Actually, Indonesian and Sundanese, like, I speak both at home and I mix both at home. And it is a very common uh, thing, I guess, in Sundanese speaking area. People speak Indonesian, people mix Indonesian and Sundanese when they are speaking. Because, like, when I speak to my parents, I can't. Uh, I can't really speak to them in the normal way. I have to use the polite way, but it creates distance between us. So we mix those polite words with Indonesian words, but still we use ma, we use teh, we use other Sundanese uh, words that cannot be translated into Indonesian. So it uh, it creates in something that is called um, we don't have uh, chalk here. Okay, uh, it, it it creates uh, something that is called kamalayon. Kama it's from the word Malayu, and with a uh, uh, circumfix ka and an, kamalayon, kamalayuan becomes kamalayon. It means Sundanese that sounds like Malay, Sundanese that sounds like Indonesian. And I think personally, most people, not, mo most, not most people, most children in Sundanese speaking area, they don't speak Sundanese, Sundanese, but this Kamalayon, this Indonesian thingy, Sundanese. And uh, they become more, they have more distance with the real Sundanese, with the Sundanese, Sundanese. And your third question was? Um, people in other areas? Ah. I don't think so. People only learn Sundanese like if they come to uh, West Java or Banten to, like to study. Even it's not necessary for them. For example, there is a there is a famous uh, university in Indonesia in in Bandung in a Sundanese speaking area, uh, and there are a lot of Javanese from other and uh, people from other parts of Indonesia, but 
sometimes they don't learn Sundanese. They say, ah, I can understand Sundanese, but I cannot really speak it because it's not necessary for them uh, to learn. W when they are interacting with local people, they can use Indonesian. Our other cases where, where, other, where Indonesian from other places would learn Sundanese is if you marry a Sundanese. Like, and again, it's not necessary because you can communicate in Indonesian anyway. So yeah, with Indonesian language, it becomes a national language that indeed unites the whole country, but there are some other implications to smaller languages like Sundanese, Java, even Javanese. This teh and ma thing, this one, all Sundanese would use them even when they are talking in Indonesian to people, to non-Sundanese people. And now it is very commonly used that it's almost like become a part of Indonesian language. Everyone in Indonesia would understand what teh and mah means, while well, actually it comes from Sundanese because they don't have this concept, these pragmatic particles of teh and mah. They adapt it into Indonesian. <laughs> Actually, yes, we have the so-called local curriculum. It means the curriculum is not regulated by the, by the Ministry of Education, but by a local body of education. So yes, Sundanese is taught in school, but I think the teaching method is not effective. It doesn't encourage the students to speak and use Sundanese. It only encourages the student to, I don't know, pass the Sundanese with the least score. Yeah. Sundanese has been written in at least four scripts. Uh, I kind of mix up the date and the period, but in the earlier days, uh, like the 14, because the first written record of the Sundanese language is found from the 14th century. From the 14th to like 15th century, they used the Sundanese, old Sundanese alphabet, the one I have here. And then in around the 17th century, uh, there was some occupation by the Javanese. So we use Javanese script. It's another script, totally different script than this. Uh, after that, I'm not sure when, maybe 18th or 19th, we, because Javanese used the Arabic to write Javanese, Sundanese also used to write Sundanese with Arabic scripts, especially if they are if, uh, a students in an Islamic school, a madrasa, something like that. And uh, around the uh, late 19th, maybe, or early 20th century, then it is written in, in Latin. Uh, and until now, actually, Sundanese doesn't really have a writing system. We have this, but this is not used by the people. It's only used in, like, for decorative purposes and for, like, names of tr of the streets, name of the government bodies. They have it in Sundanese script just to be cool or something. I actually translated a book. Do you know the Little Prince? Yeah, I translated it into into Sundanese with. Uh, Sundanese script and Latin side by side. So, and it is said that, thank you. It is said that it is the first book ever written in this modern Sundanese script. Previously, there is no book like that. It's only teach you how to write and read. It is a lovely language and even though we have the one, uh, what the one register to to be angry, actually, peop, almost all Indonesian people said, "You will never hear a Sundanese get angry because their language is so melodious and so lovely." Haturnuhun kanggo sadayana nutos ngaregupkin caturan abdi pangapunten bila ayak kalatap kalapatan atau napi kekirangan mugi sasiren sabenyeren nudi caturkan ku abdi mangpaat kanggo orang sarerea. Thank you so much for your attention. Uh, I hope it can give you a new insight, really. Thank you, thank you.